Hey guys, it's Chris here from Chris's Creative Life and I design workshops that help you create beautiful layouts from start to finish with easy to follow guides. Okay, let me get down my banner. Sorry, I'm cleaning my glasses because I could not see before I started, so I thought I should fix that up. So today I am going to uh, create a double page layout using pumpkin spice because that's the theme for this week. So uh, just let me turn myself on here so I can see comments in front of me because sometimes I get distracted and I cannot be looking way over there. Hey, gay. Okay. So, okay, here I am. Oh, one moment. Oh, I went. Okay. Okay, I think I'm here again. Okay, so let me move this out of my way so I can actually see and move that. Okay, so here's what I did. I really wanted, for some bizarre reason, plaid pumpkins on my layout. So I went into Cricut and I took two different layouts from Complete Creativity. And I know that some people sometimes have a super hard time. I'm going to start gluing stuff down while I talk. Um, some people have a super hard time with complete creativity because um, they're like pre-designed. And I'll make you bigger on my desk so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Um because they're like pre-designed layouts. But everything within those layouts is completely adaptable. So I knew I wanted some super cute funky pumpkins. Okay, I'm gonna be doing a ton of gluing, so I'm just gonna put my all-purpose mat down here, and I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. So I took two layouts and combined them together. So there's little bits and pieces from everything. So this border was on one of the layouts and I took it apart and recolored it. And I'm just gonna, as we go, I'll tell you the colors. I just kind of set everything down on top of itself so that I wouldn't lose any of the little pieces. This butterfly, we can put over here to the side for right now. So, for this, there's a border, there's an outline, and then there's some solid pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these veins to the front of this leaf banner while I keep talking. So uh, back to complete creativity. So I actually really like that cartridge. Um, I know that some people, like I said, have a hard time with it. Um, because they're full layouts or full cards or things like that. But just always remember that you could just take those things apart and readjust them. So this is um, the parts and pieces from, I think this one maybe goes up here. Let me just see. Nope. The parts and pieces from... A Thanksgiving layout and a Halloween layout and my pictures have nothing to do with either so and I took them everything apart I had contours along the way um, that's how I created all the different layers with the pumpkin that you'll see in a second when we glue them together there is a reason I'm putting this border together first um, because I want to splatter it with um, the gloss spray so I want it to dry so that's why we're going to do this first so I can just set it aside while I'm gluing the other things together I didn't want to glue too much together so you could actually see how all the parts and pieces come together but I'm going to try and move kind of quickly because it is 
um, like I said, a double page spread. So there's not much to all of the pieces. So, but I knew, like I said, I wanted plaid pumpkins. As soon as I saw the pumpkin spice paper, I knew I wanted to have some funky pumpkins at some point. And actually there's no pumpkins in my layout either. It's just, my pictures are of um, a day of a walk in a park. And actually it, there's kind of like snow on the ground in my photos, but um, all the colors went. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna glue all the veins onto the front and I'm gonna flip it over and add the solid leaves to the back because this is one of those ones where like the negative space it fits into the negative space so I like I said I just took everything apart and um, this way um, changed all the colors so I picked out the colors that went with pumpkin spice so I'm just looking to see. I wasn't actually going to use liquid glass for all this. I was going to use like the Tombow white glue, but I actually think it fell off the back of my desk. And then there's like a box of projects underneath my desk. So it is somewhere probably deep inside there. <clears throat> but so after I finished cutting all these little pieces out with the Cricut, I kind of just set them aside and lined them all up so that I could attach them today. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue on um, some spots on here. So this probably would have been a good project to use the new adhesive sheets on. So because they're still new, I have not for sure gotten in the habit of pulling them out. So, but this probably, this might have been a good project. I did use them the other day, but just on like a card in a really small space. And I have to say, I actually think I might really, really like those. So I don't know if you know, but the adhesive sheets, they come on sheets that are like 12 by 12. So you can cut them down and you just pull the backing off and then everything goes together super quickly. So maybe I will have to use those in an upcoming project. So like if you saw the card I did the other day, like the inspiration card, not the actual card I created, but it had the little thin cut um, that says congrats. And that is super fine text, thin cut. And I was using the copper ore paper. So I used those adhesive sheets on that project just to make it easy for everything to come together. So I'm just adding these all onto the back. Now you can see how pretty it's coming together. So here I have shortbread, harbor, papaya, and this is rosemary. So I'm just adding, like I said, little bits of glue onto the silhouettes and then gluing the solid pieces onto the back. And so this is from the same page design that the title came from. But the title I uh, took apart and hid lots of the contours because I wanted a nice solid background because I knew I was gonna add it. I was gonna use white um, cardstock for the background. So I did ahead of time splatter the background pieces with um, the glit gloss spray, and that and I because I wanted to tie in this border. This is what I really wanted to um, splatter first, but then I wanted it to tie into the background. So I did the background beforehand so that it would have a chance to dry, and I'll just show you that in one second. Just if I don't keep gluing, we're gonna be on here forever. 
So like I said, just add in a little bit and I lay all my pieces beside so it would go together quickly just like a puzzle and they just fit all right back on there. Okay, so this is how that's gonna look. Okay, so you can see here, it, the camera's not gonna like the white, but I took the glit and I didn't spray it with the nozzle. I actually have shaken it and opened it up and used the straw. I don't like necessarily the solid spray like, I'm much more just about the um, splatter. I love splatter, so um, you can do this or not do this. It just adds kind of, this is kind of just a fun new little toy to play with. So I love both the new colors that we got in gloss spray the white and this one so okay this i am now just going to set aside okay and i might just wipe that down quickly as we glue everything else together so There we go. Okay. Now I'm just gonna flip it over. Okay, so here are some of the other parts that I have. So like I said, this is actually from that same page, but when you cut it, it just cuts the insert pieces and the front frame. So, but you can hide the contour on certain parts and then fill in the rest. So that's what I did so that I could have this nice solid piece behind it because I wanted the title on the same color palette, not just on top of my white like this. So you'll see, right? You could totally do this, but it's gonna get lost on my white daisy background. So I'm going to add it to the papaya stripe first before I put it down so that you can see it more. It's better visual on the background. Okay, so same thing. These pieces fit right back in. But of course, I need to flip it upside down. So I'm just going to... So two, something like this, when you cut this, you'll see in Cricut, it's all grouped together. And then it kind of cuts it funky, right? It's all over the page. Sorry, I just need to wipe the gloss spray off my tweezers. Um, you'll see it's kind of like all over the page and it takes up a ton of room. So if you spend a few seconds and cut those apart with um, a shape in Cricut, then it'll take up far less room because then Cricut will group them closer together. So that's just a little tip there. Always fun sometimes to be working backwards and upside down. I have to concentrate and sometimes me concentrating and talking all at the same time does not work. So you see, they just fit right back in just like that. So if that was enough of a contrast, then you wouldn't have to worry if you don't, don't want to put a background behind it. But basically all you have to do is just hide all your contours. There's a background piece there. So you would see it once you're in Cricut. So now I'm just gluing these all down. Like I said, I did not intend on using my liquid gloss, but that's okay. We'll go with it. I just have to make sure I too also put them all the same direction. So it's just filling in like the main block pieces. So. I hadn't done like a Cricut layout in a while, so I thought it was time. And I actually think that this is a far um, 
underappreciated cartridge. I think like when it first came out, everybody was using it all the time, but um, I have not seen lots of people use it lately. And it kind of is nice because it's got some of, you can pick and choose the design elements that you want and then delete off whatever you don't want. So it makes it um, quick for everything to come together. So again, I'm just gluing these on the back and then we're gonna add them onto the background. So this says, so, so thankful. So it was super easy to pick out photos. We get four seasons here. So like I said, though, I actually, these aren't photos from the fall. Our fall is just starting now. I just noticed within the last couple of days that the trees are starting to turn and we've had a few windy days. So now there's a few more leaves in the backyard. Hey, Pauline. Okay, so I maybe should have glued some, half of this together beforehand. That would have been smart. Okay, lesson learned. If we do another one, that's what I'll do. Okay, so now, there we go. I'm gonna take this background piece, and like I said, I just hid all the contours, and it will fit right on top. So now we get that papaya stripe poking through, and I think I'm gonna use adhesive on this. I'm just gonna put this lid on here for a second. Okay, and I did, I took pieces from both of the layouts. I didn't, um, probably about equal, I have to say. So I'm gonna use these nice big pieces here to adhere my title. And so I'm gonna use the adhesive first. And then if I have to, I can go back in after and add a little bit more glue if I need it. But you'll see it should line up perfectly. So you could also, and like I played with all the sizes and stuff, right, of the original layouts. Okay, so now we've got our title together and that's super fun because actually originally I had only these top two pieces and I was not happy with the way it looks. So I thought, okay, let's see what we can do with that. Okay, so now the pumpkins. So I think too, lots of times when you're cutting out Cricut images, you're always going for cardstock, right? But I knew when, as soon as I saw the plaid paper, I really wanted funky pumpkins. So here are all the pieces of my pumpkin. So I cut out the background with this super cute polka dot. And then I have a gray outline and I hid the contours until I could actually get the stem piece. So we're gonna add these pieces down first. And I do believe this is pewter. I wanted something, so the coordinating gray, I think for pumpkin spice is actually mink, but I wanted something darker than that to um, pull the whole thing together. So not that I don't love mink because I actually think mink is one of my favorite grays but I just wanted it to be a little bit darker, but not black, because I wanted it to fall more into like the family, the autumn color palette, not Halloween. So, because it's not a Halloween lamp. Okay, so 
Here we go. Okay, so that's just super cute already, and you don't have to do anything more to it if you don't want to. Like, how cute is the polka dot pumpkin? Okay, so I'm just trying to decide. I think I might pop some of these pieces, just the middle piece, up on thin 3D foam tape. So, and just because you've used an image once or twice, don't think that you can't use it like 10 more times in different ways by switching it out. These would look super cute too if I splattered them with the gloss spray too. But I might have to do that after. I will look at it once it's all together. And then if I'm going to do it at the end, I would like put a um, post-it note because I'll have my... I will have at that point my pictures. Okay, so this is our piece that I contoured right out and it's toffee. Um, if I was going to add more spray at the end, I'll just put a post-it note or scrap paper over top of my photographs. These two pieces on the side, I'm just going to leave them flat. So I'm just going to add my liquid glass down here in my space. instead of trying to get it onto this little slice of paper, right? You could totally ink distress the edges of these. Okay, so this is even cuter. So I, like I said, I knew I wanted to do plaid pumpkins as soon as I saw pumpkin spice. And look how cute that turned out. Oh, awesome. Okay, so there are three different ones and I mixed and matched and pulled apart the sizes. So we'll put the three of them together. So I have these two that are going to go on the left hand side. And maybe I'll put this one together and then start pulling in some of the stuff. So the parts and pieces so you can see some of the other things. So, and those um, layouts, you can switch up the size of the photographs on them. I played around so that I had standard size photographs. And I'll show you my photos in a second. I'm gonna add, again, thin 3D foam tape just to pop this up one layer. Oh, but I love it even just like that. Okay, and I'll just add a little bit of adhesive in the troughs and then add my pieces in. As I said, actually, always when I start working with a collection, Sometimes it takes me a while to get in the groove of the collection and I have to say the more I play with pumpkin spice, the more in love with the color palette I am. You could also um, emboss these um, stems with an embossing folder. That would be super cute. Okay, well we just have one more pumpkin so I'll do it really quickly. So I have this big title that's going to go on the left and then on the right hand side I have this happy and I cut out a shadow so I have two um, sets. This is shortbread and this is harbor and then I actually um, debossed the title. I don't know if you could see that just with the cascading dots. So I'm just going to add these two things together too. So I just have the second one just to create a little bit of a shadow. I didn't want like an offset. I just wanted just a slight shadow. And I have to say I love Harbor. I'm sure everybody's heard me say that a hundred times so far. So I'm just going to add... Oh, 
and these are exactly the same size like I said I wasn't looking for an offset I just wanted like a fun little shadow and then the debossing just added that fun texture there so I'm just gonna set I'm gonna put a block on this just so it dries then I do have one leaf that's going on the left hand page so I just played with the two-tone cardstock for this so the actual leaf and vein play off of one is the light side of the cardstock and the other is the dark side of the cardstock I just flipped it in design space okay so we have that together so I'm going to actually stamp on this. There's a little file tag in one of those. I forget which page it's on, but we're going to put that together. And then we have three butterflies that I'll glue together too. So I'm just going to quickly do this last pumpkin because they're all the same. They're all just different shapes. So on... This little squishy guy is super cute. So, and if anybody is like not able to uh, watch the whole video process, but wants to see the final results, I have been, so everything does get um, uploaded to my YouTube channel once I'm finished. And um, you can always subscribe over there because it is sometimes hard to find videos in uh, a Facebook feed. And then I have been writing, I've been getting better now that I have at least figured out how to write in my um, blog now. I um, have been writing a blog post um, with grouping the week together. Okay, so I think we're gonna pop up some of this pumpkin too. So kind of because I've been working on themes for the week, which I super enjoy, um, I've been grouping the live videos together with all the photographs and everything on my blog. So. If uh, you don't know where that is, it's chriscreativelife.com. Super easy to find. It's the easiest way to find out anything about me. Everything is there. And you might notice something new coming soon. I, um have somebody working on something behind the scenes so keep an eye on my blog there's something coming that you've all been asking for so that's kind of exciting i'm not sure when that'll all be finished but they are working on it so yeah so i feel the when I was talking to the girl that helps me with my blog today it's been six months so uh, I'm glad that I've been able to figure out how to actually blog on there at least again I can't do a lot of the back end stuff but I can load the pictures and write the text so that's important so that's fun so yeah, as soon as I did my pumpkin spice workshop, I knew I was going to be playing with this one a lot. So, okay. I think I'll stop gluing stuff down together so you guys can actually watch some stuff now and see how this is going to come together. Okay. I do have the butterflies to glue, but we'll do that as we go. And I'll stamp on this when we get there. Okay, so here is what's going to happen here. I need to make some room so I can at least get one page down here. 
Okay, so, and I have to cover it up because the camera will not like that white. Okay, so I've got my title on this side and Yeah, you know what, actually, so it's funny that you say that, Gay, about the planes, because um, we have not, we didn't hear planes for a super long time, and then just all of a sudden, they started coming back, and it is, it's super strange to all of a sudden hear again, and then you realize you haven't heard them in so long. Okay, so let's see here. So I have this photo. So this photo mat was on one of those pages. So I just sized it to the photo that I wanted. So I have a four by four photo that's going on this side. And this super cute mat with just like the ragged edge. So this is a three by four photo and this one is going over here like that. We're still gonna play around with this a little bit so that we get all our layers, right? But I'm gonna have two pumpkins on this side. Okay, so then, like I said, I've got the spray gloss and it's dried. I did that earlier this afternoon. So then I have, this is a super cute photo mat too with these little um, cross stitches. Oh, maybe we should put something behind there. Yep. So I have this that I'm going to put somewhere else. So I think we'll add the shimmer trim behind there. So this is what we're going to do. Just going to cut it. And Close the window, because now, of course, there's all sorts of noise. Okay, so let's see. If this is a long enough scrap. Yeah, okay, so I want a little bit of that shimmer trim behind there. And I could go and like cut a piece of paper, like uh, glitter paper, but we're doing this on the fly, so that's sometimes what happens. If I knew exactly where I was going to lay this down, I could just um, put it down on my background and then lay my photo over. But I want to be able to mess around with it. Okay, so see, there's always a way to make something happen. So I'm just, I just added it to a scrap piece of paper, and now the little stitches are glittery gold behind there. So that's fun. Okay, so that is gonna go here. I have a pumpkin for this side. Then we have that fun banner that I've glued together. So the reason I actually had, oh, thank you. So I'm going to add the shimmer trim to the edge of this and then I'm going to have to put it somewhere on that side too. So I am just putting this down. Just so that I get a rough idea of where I need it to be. So because you see, here is the edge of my leaves. So that is kind of, this is kind of the most important thing, right? I can't go off or I'm gonna have to cut off my leaf. So then I have 
a banner in the same gray color. It's going to go down here. I have this papaya leaf and then this title. So this is roughly how we're coming together. Then this is another one of the photo borders and it matches this one and it's going right here. Like that. So I just need to decide. No, I actually think I'm gonna leave that just like that. So now I'm just gonna start piecing everything together. Then I do have these three butterflies. And I actually think, so I think they came with the So Thankful. So one is going over here to kind of fill in this space over here. And then I have a Harbor and Shortbread one and I'm gonna put it over here because I don't have a ton of that color on this side of the page. Like I have the photo mat and then the leaves. And so I'm just bringing it up here with that butterfly. And then the third one I just put down somewhere. One, two. Okay, well, we'll find it. That's so funny. Oh, it's right in the middle of my photograph. Okay. Yeah, it's so weird. Okay, so then, oh, we have this little thing we need to stamp. So, good eyes. I know, it was like right on my nose, which is the funny part. Okay, so I have this little tab, and that's where I'm going to put my third butterfly. But I grabbed this stamp set so autumn is calling and i have this little hello and so i thought i would stamp that on this little tab just the little hello and then if i want i could add more leaves so i'm going to put my versamat down which is beside me Okay, because I know I need to add that shimmer trim. And then I'm going to add a shimmer trim over here somewhere. So, But I don't know where yet. But I think I actually need something more over here. So I might put that over there. Okay. I do also in the other room, which I forgot to bring in here, have more. Um, I cut extra leaves too. So I actually could add more leaves under my pumpkin after if I need to. So let's though quickly stamp the hello and I have my harbor ink and I'm just trying to literally find a spot where I don't have stuff okay so I just need to decide if I want to go this way Okay, so I actually don't know if I've used this yet. So I'm just gonna stamp it on this little scrap piece of paper. Okay, and I stamped it on this side because I think later I'm going to, oops, that was almost bad. I might come back in 
with these little tiny leaves and add some over here. So I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'll tack it down, but I'm not gonna like fully adhere it to my layout, if you know what I mean. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to get the shimmer trim down and this piece is too long but so I'm just going to move some of my stuff over okay and I'm going to trim it so that it's the same like I want it the same length as um, my strip so that's not straight either so I'll go like this like that okay so now I'm gonna put my ruler down and add my okay so I know that this is on my page right and I can see actually why don't I just add this down first that makes sense oh my goodness sometimes Sometimes I try to make things too complicated, but if I lay this down first, then we will have the straight line to add the shimmer trim behind. And I just wanted it to kind of poke out. I didn't really want it as like a major, um, embellishment, but I just, it kind of ties everything together. Okay. So I think. So I'm just lining up my ruler at the top and the bottom of my layout. And actually I should just measure. It's 11 and a half inches. So I have a quarter of an inch at the top and at the bottom. And I know I should just have enough room. So this is a delicate. Oh, so I don't want to have to Pull it back up. Okay, so before I push anything down though, I'm going to um, just make sure that it fits and it does. And if I had to, I could maneuver, like if it was just slightly not fitting, I could maneuver that leaf to fit on there better. So now I can see, I can just slightly tuck in my shimmer trim. And like I said, I didn't want like a big, I just wanted it kind of to peek out there. I would have added the little leaves onto that tab right now, but I did pull out other colors. I didn't think I would add more to the background, but I actually think I could just um, add a little bit of the tiny leaves into the background and that would be very pretty okay so before I glue anything down here we're just gonna assess my spacing Okay, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then this goes right here. So, this I'm going to 
glue down first because I want it flat because the photos I actually don't know if you could see this but I popped my photos up on 3d foam tape so they all are the same they all have 3d foam tape on them just popping them off the mat just add a little bit of fun so here is where this is going right there I'm just gonna quickly glue that butterfly together so I know I don't want the wings attached flat to the body so I'm just adding glue in the middle of the body okay and I'm just gonna put it up here for a second to dry I'll do all three of them at the same time because it's just super quick Okay, and then I'm going to add my next photo. Okay, I'll just set those up there to dry. So now I can, I'm not going to tack this one down just yet. So I am leaving room at the top because remember I do have that tab that I want to add up there, right? So there we go. Now I'm going to add this banner. Right there. Okay, I'm going to tack down my papaya leaf. In my next life, I think I want to name colors. My daughter always thought it would be fun to like name nail polish colors. Nope, that needs to come down a little bit. Like that must be a fun job, I think. Yeah, right there. Okay, and I'm going to add 3D foam tape on my pumpkin. Okay, so and then I'm going to just tuck that up into the photograph. And I'll add my butterfly onto this side. Right here. Okay, so this side for all intents and purposes is done. I have that tab. So I'll add it and I'll just um, 
lightly tack down the white daisy because then I can just move it to stamp. So there. Okay, so now we have this side. I need to put the lid on my liquid gloss. Okay, so obviously the biggest thing on this side is the title, so I need to get that down first and then all of this can kind of sandwich in around my title. And I will just get the main part of my title down and then if I have to go in after with glue to um, tack down just those little um, pieces I will there we go and I'll add my butterfly And I'll add this photo. Okay, let's just. I end up sandwiching myself sometimes into a very small space with all my stuff around me. And that's what happened. That's how I end up like getting the butterfly in my middle of my face and not being able to see it. Okay, one sec, I'm going to grab those leaves that I forgot to get. See, I couldn't remember why I had cut extra leaves, but now I know. Okay, so the other thing I'm gonna point out is that so I have rosemary over on this side of the layout and I don't have a ton of rosemary over here. So I have a rosemary leaf. I'm gonna add that in here. And then, actually I have two of them. So we could do it like this. I don't think I need any more shortbread over there. Okay, and like I said, the same reason I put the harbor butterfly on this side, I'm going to bring this harbor leaf over here. So uh, this is kind of the end here we'll do these last few things and then I'll add some gold sequins so now I have to just quickly so same thing with these leaves I just played I don't know if you can see it because it's super hard to pick up on camera but I flipped the veins so that they're the lighter side of the cardstock and then this is the true side of the cardstock so that they're just kind of all the same color. They don't have this dramatic difference like these ones, the shortbread with the harbor on them. And I think this will be the perfect addition to this side.
it's funny I knew I had them and I knew I should grab the end before I started and I did not so I also have to go underneath my desk after this and look for my white glue So this is one of the fun, like the, being able to do things like this with the leaves is one of the super fun things about the two-tone cardstock, right? So we're going to go like this. Last leaf, I'll just glue it together. Okay, so now we just need to tack it all down. But I need to put the lid on here. Okay, there we go. We're in the home stretch now, guys. Okay, so I'm going to tack down the leaves. This I'm going to add 3D foam tape because I can. Oh, and I know how I'll add a little bit of the gold shimmer trim onto this side. So don't forget if you want to watch the whole thing start to finish, um, the, the link there's a, I'll be writing a blog post on the weekend and then all of the links to like my YouTube channel and um, all the photographs are, will be on my blog also. Okay, just a few gold sequins, I think, sprinkled around. And like I said, I might grab a few different ink colors after and kind of um, scatter in a few of those little tiny leaves everywhere. Oh, need a glue. Let her fly down. Okay. Almost done. So, I, like I said, I want to just get a little bit of that shimmer trim over here. So I'm just going to tuck a little tiny bit underneath this photo over here. So anything that I put on one side out of a double page lid, I do try and bring at least a little bit of it onto the other side. So now I'm just going to, oh, thank you. 
we're just going to poke this up just a little bit. There we go. Everybody always says to me, um, somebody asked if I would do process video of how I come up with ideas. And seriously, lots of it is just on the fly. So like this piece, I obviously really should have put it down before, but I wasn't sure where I was going to do that. There we go. Yep. So that's why lots of times too, I don't quite push everything down super hard. So I'm just going to cut this a little bit on an angle so it looks kind of like uh, just a little strip of washi tape underneath the photo. That's sparkly. Okay. Just like that. So now it's on both sides. That makes me super happy because that would annoy me. It's like when I did the card on Wednesday. So I don't know who saw when I did the slimline card on Wednesday. So this was the card I did on Wednesday. And when I finished, something was bugging me about the card. And so I let it sit on my desk for the longest time. And I realized, so this flower was actually peach before and the card was too light. So, but if you don't like something, then change it. Sorry, I need a sip of my water. So, yeah, there we go. But it was like the whole time there was something bugging me about the card. Okay, so now we have shimmer trim on both sides. We have pumpkins on both sides. We have all of the colors on both sides. So now I'm just gonna add a few gold sequins, like I said, and then I do think I will come back with a little bit of that stamp set just with those little tiny leaves after, because I'll have to pull out the inks. So, but I'll just add in these little tiny leaves just in little spots along the way. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add, like I said, a few gold sequins and then I'm done. So, I hope you guys enjoyed Pumpkin Spice Week. It was a fun one. So, and I think it's quite helpful that my dogs match pumpkin spice paper. I just have to say, that's probably nice for me. So, and I'm just going to, uh, so I just grabbed the loose gold sequins and I'm just going to use the gold colored ones. I don't care if they're the shiny or the matte. I'm gonna kind of try and take a combination of the two. And just different sizes and I'm just gonna kind of tuck them in all over the place. So I'm just adding glue dots to the back of the sequins and sticking them down on my layout. They kind of just play up the um, spray gloss too, so that is nice.
I need some of the smaller ones. So I use these a lot. So it's funny because now I've got lots of the clear left because uh, I've been using them so much. Because I'm pretty sure, I can't remember now, but I might have used them in like, I think that gold I find just goes so well in fall. So it's probably, I've used them I'm sure in one of my workshops for September, October. So. There we go. Oh, I should get out my pickup tool to pull my sequins out. You guys, I don't know if you've seen that yet, but this is too fun. Okay, so this is new in the idea book, and you get two of them. And so you can, it's got just like a waxy finish. So it's just slightly sticky enough to pick up your sequin or something small off your desk and put it down. So eventually it will lose its stick and then you just sharpen it a little bit more. Oh, so fun. So fun. I, um, especially for this, I'm like, I keep thinking, oh, I should pull it out, but I hadn't actually pulled it out of it was in the back there. So, I'm sure you guys have heard me say it a thousand times so far, but this has to be one of my favorite things from the new idea book. We're far past the top 10, I think. I'm pretty sure we're rounding out my top 20. So it's just as easy as that. So it's not though sticky. It's not sticky to the touch. It's just got like a waxy finish. But so all you do is touch it down and now you can add your sequin to your glue dot or whatever. If you put, if you prefer to put glue on your layout and stick your um, sequin down that way, then you could just place it down on your glue. I don't do it that way. I use a glue dot. So super fun. They're not very expensive. You get two of them and you just sharpen them when they're not sticky anymore. But that is super fun. Okay. Now I got totally distracted with the pickup tool. And okay, so I think we're getting there. I just want a few more sequins on this side. So you can see I added different sizes onto my glue dots so I can mess around with them and um, add them where I want. Nope, that one didn't stick to the glue dot. Okay, I have one here. Okay, so 
So other than the little bit of stamping I'm going to do here and then maybe a little bit in the background, uh, this one is done. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Like I said, so if you missed parts of it, just a sec, if you missed parts of it and you want to go back and watch from the beginning, um, you can do that here or if you can't find it, you could always go to my YouTube channel. And um, on the weekend, I basically write a blog post about with grouping the projects from this week together. So I'll have both the pumpkin spice photographs up on my blog and that's at chriscreativelife.com. And um, yeah, that's what I've got for you guys today. And then I do actually, in my, new, in my newsletter, I do send out kind of a synopsis of what happened during the week. So if anybody's not on the list that would like to be on the list, just type in the comments list and I'll send you the link to get you signed up. Um, and literally it is, it's just kind of, this is what happened in my studio this week in case you missed it. Um, and I try and send those out on Sundays normally. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but um, that is kind of just the pattern that I've gotten myself into. And um, so, sorry, Emmy has distracted me. She's come into my office because she's trying to, there's squirrels running around in the backyard right now. Okay, so that's what I've got for you guys today. And we'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye-bye.